Hey guys, I feel like it's been absolutely forever since I've done an astrophotography tutorial. It's been a weird summer for me. Uh, Weather-wise around here, it's been pretty, nah, there's been a lot of clouds and haze, smoke, that kind of thing that have really obscured the night sky. So I haven't got out much. That'll change about a week ago when I went out and grabbed this photo uh, of Orion and a few other kind of nice stars and now the nebula in the region over top of a tree in Saskatchewan. And when I was processing this photo, I stumbled across a new technique, at least for me, to reduce the star size in my photos. And you may ask, why do you want to reduce star size in the photo? Well, number one, it, it just, it distracts from the photo when there's so many bright stars, when you really want the viewer to focus on the Milky Way and maybe the Orion Nebula, those types of things. So it really helps the viewer to focus on what you want them to focus on when you are able to reduce the size of some of those stars that aren't as important in the composition. So I want to jump into two methods that I use to reduce my star size. First, uh, I think it's out there. It's pretty common knowledge, but I want to run through it anyways to show you that it is a useful tool. And second is the new approach that I've uh, just stumbled across about a week ago. Um, a really powerful tool and it works, I think, much better. So without further ado, we're going to jump in right Photoshop right now. Star size reduction. So you can see this is the finished photo. And what I really wanted people to look at in the night sky was the Witch's Head Nebula, Regal and uh, the Orion Nebula and kind of the Orion belt, you know, flame horse head, those kind of things. What I didn't want people to see was all of this other stuff in the night sky. So I wanted the focus to really be drawn to the parts that I like the best. And so star size reduction was a way for me to eliminate these, these distracting elements all the way around, which is all these kind of brighter stars in the, in the area. So, and the other problem I had on this night was you can see, uh, this is not trailing. Um, this is actually shake from wind. Um, when you have a big long lens, I'm precariously balanced on a tripod, on top of a tracker, on top of an EQ mount, and everything kind of builds up and you have shake that happens when it's windy outside. And so as much as I tried to block it, the wind did affect these images. And so I'm left with a bit of uh, shake on these stars. You can see there's a bit of randomness to them. So that's how I know it's wind and not trailing. Um, so I needed to kind of make those smaller to make them a little bit more acceptable. And so what I decided to do was star size reduction. And I went at it in two ways. And the first way is fairly common. So I went to select color range and I make a selection of the star. So I'm going to zoom in by hitting command or control if you're on PC and I'm clicking on a star. So I'm picking a bright, bright star and I'm going to adjust my fuzziness to make a, make Photoshop make a selection. So I'm going to, if I go all the way up, you can see the white is what it's selecting. It's making a selection of almost everything. If I go down to very little, it's selecting just the brightest stars. So I want somewhere in the middle, um, typically between 90 and 110, somewhere in there. So I'm going to kind of pick this for now and hit OK. And now you can see the marching ants show up. Photoshop has selected these stars, um, but it's done a good job of not selecting some of the smaller ones, although you can see it has selected some of these. So we're going to go um, select and we're going to modify that selection just to make it a bit bigger so that we actually, now we see we are just on the outside edge of those stars. So we've modified it and increased that selection by two pixels. Now, if I were to do a star size reduction at this point, this edge is too hard. So I want to feather that edge out so that that effect is nice and feathered and less noticeable. So I'm going to feather that selection in by one pixel. Okay, so now we have our selection of all these stars and what I want to do is make them smaller. So I'm going to hit filter, other, and then minimum. And this is where I can make these stars as small as I want. So if I back this effect off, you can see they're nice and bright. If I move this up, they completely disappear. If I go way too much, they're gone. What you're left with though is this color kind of halo. And so I don't really like that. Um, so I'm gonna bring this effect back until there is some white center in that star, but there isn't a halo around the outside edge. So this looks okay, at least in this region. So we're gonna hold space bar and move around a little bit just to make sure that I don't get any haloing. So this looks like an area that might be good to look at. So, um, back it off a bit until I see just maybe a small halo around these ones. So kind of around 0.7 looks okay. And then I'm going to hit okay. And once 
Photoshop filters this, you're gonna see the stars will shrink. Um, so I'm gonna hit Command or Control D for deselect. So now we see what Photoshop has done. And there's a bit of haloing here. Now one thing I can do is back this effect off. So hit opacity and move this back until it looks a little bit better. So I can bring it up to about even, you know, 60% looks okay here. But we know that over here, we can maybe go a bit stronger. So we're gonna bring it up till this section looks okay. So pretty much around 80%. And then I can more or less create a layer mask and go into some of these areas that are a bit stronger and make sure I have uh, black as my color on a white mask, turn my flow down to about 10% and I can just paint this effect out. Once my computer catches up. So just paint this effect out in some of the areas that are really bad. So I can go through here again and just do that. And I will do that, especially for you know, the Orion Nebula, make sure that that didn't get affected. So anything that I don't want to be smaller, these big stars in here, I'm gonna erase those completely. So um, usually I spend a bit of time doing this just to keep this a bit shorter. I'm not going to kind of do that, but you can spend as much time or as little time as you want masking out this effect. So you can see what that's done. If I turn this off, nice big stars. If I turn this on, those stars get smaller, quite a bit smaller. So it's done a really good job already but this is even a bit cleaner. So I do want to show you the, what I've done to, um, to make those stars a bit smaller. So this is the second approach that I've just learned that I really want to share with you guys, really powerful approach. So what I've done right now is I basically want to put a, uh, a copy of everything on top. So I've used Shift, Option, Command, E, and that's put a copy of everything on top. So what I'm going to do now is go to Filter, and I'm going to go Noise, dust and scratches and if I zoom in on an area as so you can see I've eliminated um, everything <laughs> pretty much uh, there are no stars in here so the reason for that is just how I have this set up so if I were to turn the radius down the stars come back if I turn it up the stars are going away okay um, pretty straightforward and so the threshold is basically that fine detail. So I do want that fine detail in here. I don't want it to look um, kind of blurry and wishy-washy. There does need to be noise in this photo. There is noise in it in the foreground, so there needs to be noise in the sky as well. And there was noise to begin with. So I'm gonna bring the threshold up to a nice level where I do clean up a little bit, but it's not nearly as washed out as it was at zero. So. And then the radius, I'm gonna bring this up slowly until I end up with some points, which are basically around here looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit okay. See, now this looks too extreme. Um, if I were to leave it like this, all that is left in the sky is just a few stars. And even the ones that are there, they don't look very good. Um, they look like they're behind a thin layer of haze. Um, it's just a glow. So it might be a nice effect, but it's not what I'm going for. So I'm going to actually put a mask on this. And what I want is Photoshop to bring back those brightest stars. So I'm going to, sorry about that. Uh, I'm leaving this on. I'm going to go either I can turn a uh, run a darks mask. If you have a luminosity panel, run a darks, a darks four, darks five on this, and that will be it. You're done. I'm going to show you how to make that yourself. So if I go to channels and I click on my RGB, so I'm going to hold command and I'm going to hit RGB. And so that's going to create basically a luminosity mask for me. That's selecting the brightest, the brighter parts of the image. Um, and so what I can do is go back to layers and hit layer masking. So that's going to load this into the photo. And so now the effect is taking place anywhere where you see white. But what I want is just these brighter stars to be pinpoint. So I actually want to invert this mask so that the brighter parts of the image 
don't get affected by this effect. So I'm going to hit command I and that's going to invert my mask. And so now you see all my bright stars are black points. So if I were to zoom in now, you can see these brighter stars do look like pinpoints again. So if I were to turn this off, you can see maybe this effect is taken a little bit more extreme than I would like, but you can see the stars are actually pinpoint now. Um, so if I were to back this off to a reasonable level, so somewhere kind of around here, then we have the best of both worlds. And so if I were to turn this off and on, you can see it's done a really nice job and just cleaning all that up. And if I zoom in on that detail, it's still there. Those stars look like stars. They're not that kind of wishy-washy, faint, glowy thing. So they are pinpoint. They look like stars. And the benefit of this method as opposed to the first one is you don't get that haloing. Um, so the last thing we need to do is make sure that we haven't done this effect to the foreground. So I'm going to put this in a group and go into my edits and find the mask that I used. This one right here. And I'm going to add this mask to the selection, click on my group and mask that effect out, basically clicking the layer mask, mask it out of the foreground. So white is where that effect is happening. So any star size reduction that we've done is now happening only to the top layer. So if we turn that off, turn it on. You can see the effect is happening just to this top layer and nowhere in this tree or the foreground. And that's it guys, the star size reduction. I hope you enjoyed this video, found it really helpful, uh, really useful kind of powerful tool, um, especially that second one. Uh, so if you like this video, feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you wanna see more like it. And as always, thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye.